Well, in today's marriage topic, we're talking about fighting. All right, get your fists ready to fight with your spouse, right? Is that what we're supposed to do? Well, David and Tracy Sellers say it's actually possible to have a healthy fight, and that's what we're going to talk about today. David and Tracy Sellers with Vows to Keep at VowsToKeep.com. Thank you again for being with us. Our pleasure. So what's this deal about fighting? It's okay <laughs> to fight in our marriage? We can come out on the other side of a fight more unified. It is possible. Not only is it possible, but we've had experience doing it a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> we've seen many times in our own marriage and of course with couples that we worked with where things that start out as arguments, of course, turn into fights. The next thing you know, you've got all out marital war on your hands. Mm. And that stems from the fact that we are sinners and at times we get to really see right in front of us why we need our Savior. So we've always found that it's been very helpful for us to think about what are we doing in our fights? and Why are they happening? And what's our behavior during them uh, that we need to maybe set up some ground rules for? But I start with, I like to start with, what are the things that we're fighting about? Why are they fights for us? And so we actually try to do a little bit of an assessment of what are the topics, what are the things that seem to get us tripped up, what are the things that cause us to go around the mountain one more time, right? Mm -hmm. Every couple seems to have two or three topics that they will repeatedly come back to over and over again. And those are the ones that we find are really important to focus on because we want to do a heart check and say, God, am I doing something in this that's really about just having such a passion for your word, such a passion for what you're asking for me that I'm really upset, or is it not like that? James chapter four really speaks to that, and it's an eye-opener to me. I'm gonna read it to you. Verses one and two says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but you don't have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You might be thinking, well, I've never killed over something I've wanted before, but let me read it again in a little bit different context, in the marriage context. What causes fights and quarrels among us, David? Don't they come from our desires that battle within us, the desires we want to have our own way? We desire, but we don't have, so we're willing to kill our relationship to get them. We covet that control, but we can't get what we want, so we quarrel and we fight. And this is such an eye-opener to me in my heart because that really is truly what it's usually about. It's about me getting my own way. I want what I want. I want my personal preference. But when we're willing to lay those down, a lot of times that fight can just dissolve right then and there. You probably know what trips you up in your marriage. And when we meet with couples, we often ask them you know, to assess what it is that they're struggling with, what it is that they're commonly um, going around the same mountain dealing with. And we ask them to think through this at a heart level. What are the things that are really just a personal preference issue that I need to let go of? Because my personal preference is no more important than yours or anyone else's in our family. We need to be always willing to give in that. We have found though that there's been seven rules that we've put in place in our marriage that we've helped share to others and have been very instrumental in us going through a fight and actually coming out stronger on the other side of it. So we wanted to share some of those with you. We call them the seven habits of a healthy fight. So the first one that we ever put in place, even before we realized that, hey, this is a ground rule, we were dating and we had our first big fight and I called David a jerk. And I was mortified. <laughs> I saw how it cut him down, how name calling in a relationship really just takes the wind out of the sails. And I look to Ephesians 4.29 that says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what's helpful for building others up according to what they need. If we just applied that one scripture during a fight to build one another up, we probably wouldn't be fighting at all. It sounds like a scripture to be memorizing yes. so that we can bring that Definitely. out right at that very moment. It might be something you might want to post on your bathroom mirror or in your <laughs> car, wherever you do your most fighting. Really, truly, to have the scripture right in front of you can be so helpful. As a husband, one of the rules that I found was very helpful for me was to actually hold her hand. It's amazing when you're in a disagreement how your tone changes when you do this. Huh. Um, you, you soften, you don't find yourself shouting, and mm -hmm. it says something about your commitment. It says, I am not going to let go of you. I'm not going to let go of this marriage. I'm not going to let this issue be something that divides us. We're not going to storm out of here as two separate people. We're going to stay here and work through this. So is that number two or is that, that just is number part two? That's yeah. number two. So the next one, I have to go to God on this one because if I come to him 
and I say, Lord, I need you to forgive me about this, or I come to him and say, this is the issue I'm dealing with right now. He never says to me, Tracy, I am still reeling from what you did last week, or I'm still getting over what you did a year ago. He never brings up past issues, ever. He always deals with what's happening right now, and we need to do that in our marriage. So that's the third rule of a healthy fight. The fourth is to really look past our spouse's words. There's a lot of times where we, in our emotions and our frustrations, will use words that aren't very helpful. And then we find ourselves reacting to the words that our spouse has used. And ultimately, we can just escalate and escalate and escalate. And next thing you know, you've, you've got all, all at war on your hands. By listening for what they're really trying to say, by paying attention to what's at the heart of the matter for them, you can usually work your way through a fight very, very quickly. There's times I found myself just literally stopping her in her frustration and said, you're right. I understand, you know, beyond the words, the actual heart of this issue is this, and you're right. There's other times where I haven't necessarily agreed with her, but we've been able to really stop all of the emotions that are spiraling and just focus on what's the problem and where can we go in scriptures to actually look for a solution? Repentance is huge in marriage and that is the next habit of a healthy mm -hmm. fight, saying, I'm sorry for, and then actually name your part in the trouble, even if you think it's only a small percentage. I'm sorry, even just right then, I raised my voice at you. I'm sorry I took this tone with you earlier and we started to spiral out of control. Naming your part in the issue is a great way to tell your spouse, I want to be on the road to reconciliation with you. Number six is to forgive generously. And this is something that we can easily model after Christ. We see that, that this is really something that he did well. When we read in Romans, I bet most people listening might be able to finish this verse. It says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait for us to come and, and say, oh my goodness, I can't believe I failed you in this way. He, he died for us in advance of what even we were going to do. And that same thing needs to happen in our marriage. We need to be able to forgive generously and sometimes even before they've even recognized how bad they've messed up. You mean I'm not supposed to wait until my husband <laughs> changes the way I think he's supposed to change? <laughs> not even if he waits a year to come to you and says, I'm sorry for this. It's to forgive him in advance. The last uh, habit that we would encourage couples to have for healthy fighting is to actually pray together. And this is something that I found as a husband trying to be a spiritual leader in my home is the most critical thing I can do. There's oftentimes that we will be hashing out something, we'll be in a fight, and I won't know the answer. I won't have the best balance, and I, I need to stop and actually recognize this is the time where only God can be the person who's gonna solve this. Only God is the answer here. And so I will take her hand and say, Lord, we are going to fail. We're, we recognize right now both of us are right on the edge of sin and in our anger, and we need you to step in. We need your leadership in this situation. And almost every time we see that situation defuse, there's times we've had to continue to work through things beyond that, of course, uh, but God is faithful to show up. And it's oftentimes just a matter of putting yourself in the right posture before him together. Jennifer, I think there's many more ground rules that a couple could set up in their quest to have a healthy marriage. They know that they're going to have an argument. We're people, we're sinners, we're going to do that. So how do we come out on the other side of that more unified? I would invite couples to sit down and lay out some ground rules. Maybe they aren't the same ones that we had, but to go to scripture and find out how we should talk with one another, what we should be saying, what we shouldn't be saying, what tones we should use, and things we might need to just be quiet on and be patient with and be forgiving about. I love the verse in Luke 11 where Jesus says, blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. And we'll find that when we follow his word, our marriages are gonna be so blessed. And even for the people who have failed in this over and over again, you bet. it's not too late to start at this yeah. point. It can be more difficult to establish these things mm -hmm. because hurt can be deep. Mm -hmm. it, there's wounds there that many, mm -hmm. many couples have not have right. not worked on, mm -hmm. but that forgiveness mm -hmm. factor, turning to God, giving it over to Him, and watching the things that He can mm -hmm. do. Incredible, yeah. Seven habits of a healthy fight. What an important list David and Tracy have provided. And like they said, it's really just a small portion of the tools that God can give you to help you through your healthy fights with your spouse. Go to their website, VowsToKeep.com, or contact them if you want to discuss this further and find out ways that God can 
restore your marriage and turn what may have been years of difficult fighting into an opportunity to be molded together in the way God wants to direct you.